Hi guys, welcome back to Homestead Grub. In today's video, we're picking up kind of sort of where we left off in the last video, where we made pork fried rice and we started the egg roll filling. But I got a little tired, so I stopped because we had to eat at some point and I was spending way too much time on prepping dinner. So we ate our pork fried rice with some store-bought pork egg rolls, but because I had all of the filling um, from the day before, I wanted to finish the egg rolls the following day. So this is a brief interlude of all of the goodness that we chopped and cooked up yesterday for both the pork fried rice and for the egg rolls. And if you'll remember, I saved one of the bowls as more of an egg roll filling compared to the more like vegetable roll. Um, I'm sorry, vegetable bowl for the pork bread rice. All right, so here we are cooking up our pork fried rice and our egg roll filling, and we're using that same cubed ham, and we're just gonna add it to the silver bowl, which is our egg roll filling bowl. All right, now we'll give it a good stir and get that good flavor all worked in and set that aside. And this is where we left off yesterday. We're chopping these green onions so that we have some good crunch to include in our egg rolls. I always like to have a little bit of crunch to counter the softer texture of the inside of the egg roll. Um, the crunchiness of the outside of the egg roll does this as well, but I think having that variety makes them extra delicious. All right, we're gonna add about a teaspoon of sesame seeds. I know we already seasoned this pretty well yesterday, but now we're gonna flavor just a little bit more specifically thinking about egg rolls. So we're adding to this a three-fourths teaspoon black pepper and three quarters teaspoon Redmond salt. Here we're adding three quarters teaspoon ginger. Oh, this is all give or take, of course. And then about half a teaspoon of cayenne. And then when I add the chili pepper flakes, um, it is about three quarters of a teaspoon as well, just to make sure there's enough heat in our egg rolls. You'll see we have a recipe card here, but it's more for remembering the ingredients than worrying about amounts. So to this, we added about two teaspoons of garlic powder and now about a tablespoon or so of syrup. So we have a little sweet with our heat. And then this is probably a tablespoon or so of soy or coconut aminos, and then a good squeeze of sriracha, I don't know, maybe a teaspoon. And we'll mix this all together and this will have some really good egg roll flavor for us. Now we'll get this stirred all together really well and we'll set this aside and work on preparing for our egg rolls. Now I'm using store-bought egg rolls for this because this is the first time I've ever tried making egg rolls. Someday in the future I'd like to make my own egg rolls and roll those out. But today is not that day. We're starting off simple with the store-bought. So here we're adding about a tablespoon and a half or so of filling. I had read online in the wisdom of all of the recipes out there um, between one tablespoon and two tablespoons. So I figured I'd split the difference and see how this first one goes. So I have a little glass of water that I am using to make sure that I can get a good seal on these and it rolled up pretty well. One tip for next time. I'll lay down a clean flour sack towel over the cutting board so that any extra moisture is absorbed. The more egg rolls I made, the more residual water built up and some of the egg roll dough got pretty soft while trying to work with them. You can see the uh, measuring out of the filling. It didn't last very long. Now, you might be asking yourself, is this all really worth it? To make the filling, to let it cool, and then to roll each egg roll individually? Well, if you're like me and are interested in having fewer mystery ingredients in your food, you just might think so. When I did the food math on these, I could make roughly two egg rolls for the price of one when priced out per egg roll from the store, or at least the ones I usually buy at the store. Sounds like twice as many, twice as many egg rolls 
or half as much money for egg rolls. So I think it's worth it, especially to know that these are in the freezer waiting for us whenever we want to enjoy them. Here you can see I pulled out my homemade granola bars out of the oven. I make these about once a week or so. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video on these granola bars. As I get closer to the end of the stack of the store-bought egg roll wraps, you can see the filling mound keeps growing. I was getting a little nervous seeing how much I still had left in the bowl versus how many egg rolls I had left. So these started to get uh, pretty sizable portions of filling. To give these egg rolls a try, I'm going to pop them into the preheated air fryer at 400 degrees for about 5 minutes or so. Um, you'll see later on I remembered that I needed to actually spray these down with some olive oil to make sure that they crisp up when I check it on them. So next time I make these, I'll make sure to spray them right away and then again after I rotate, I'll spray them a second time just to make sure they're good and crispy. Excuse me while well, I interrupt this egg roll video to cut up our granola bars. I don't know how well the camera is picking up how damp some of these egg rolls are, but I needed a larger space to place the egg rolls where they wouldn't be touching. Any extra moisture was making the wrappers very soft, and I didn't want a big gooey mess to become a bunch of holy egg rolls after trying to peel them apart. So I'm swapping out the plate for a pizza sheet for the rest of the egg rolls. Oh my gosh, these egg rolls are getting a bit out of control in terms of how much filling I'm adding. After cooking these up from being frozen from the freezer, the next time I make these, I'll make sure that I do a better job of keeping them thin like the store-bought versions, so that they heat up better in the middle.
This is our last egg roll. You can tell by the cardboard that I've used up the whole package. So I'm pulling out the remaining filling um, from yesterday from the fried rice, and I'm also pulling out the frozen rice mixture. Normally I like to flash freeze the rice um, and then bag it, but I obviously forgot. In this case, it actually worked out really well. So I'll have a layer of rice and a layer of the ham and vegetables, and I'll flash freeze this together so that once it's all combined um, in frozen pieces in individual bags, it'll be really easy to heat up and fry up um, for future sides or suppers now that it's all flash frozen together. With that out of the way, and after a quick tidy up, the egg rolls seemed dry enough to consolidate back onto a single plate. Since I found out I only had 19 wrappers, I figured I could make room to have them all on one plate. All right, look at these gems. They crisped up really well. They seem a little more like spring rolls than they do egg rolls but it was still really satisfying to cut in and have it be so crunchy. You can see the pieces fly off from using the knife and they were quite hot. Um, I had poured some chili uh, dipping sauce to give them a little extra flavor, but they look like egg rolls and they tasted just like egg rolls. They were really good. I'm admittedly a little bit partial to the more like floury, flakier egg roll dough. So when I do make the time to make my own dough, I think they will ev be even better next time. But these are really good and they've been great to enjoy as a snack by just throwing in the air fryer for a few minutes and knowing that they're made from home. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, it's kind of a two-part series. If you missed the first video, I'll link that down below so you can watch how we got to the filling. Um, but otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you on the next video. Bye guys.